Grocery collection video part one. So yesterday we unboxed a few and as it turned out, I left one um, in the box. It's not the first time I've left something in the box and I'm beginning to question my, um, I don't know, I'm just wondering if I'm kind of losing it sometimes. I'm only 50, so I'm a little worried. I mean, uh, you know, they get you one way or the other, don't they? Okay, so camera's over here now. I've swapped things around again, so the camera's right here. Yesterday it was right there. Uh, the beauty of shooting with... Ooh, yes, yes, now I remember. Let me focus this for you. There is no automatic focus. I have to do it manually. Um, oh, now I remember. Yes, it's been a while. I um, could easily refer to my notes, but it's tedious and I prefer to do it this way. I mean, let's just appreciate. Over there, you could see the glitter of these. Um, faceted crystal here. You can see the glitter at the... Not glitter, but you know those... Can you see that? Oh, maybe not. Oh. The light's bouncing all over me. It's amazing. But... Once again, that knot here, brilliant. The knot here. And look at that crucifix. Oh, I should show you the light catching. Look at the light catching. So pretty. I think human the human brain found things that resembles nature pretty because um, that reminds me of the bouncing of lights on morning dews. Water under the bright sunshine in the morning anyway okay so let's remove that ugly scissors and maybe we'll we'll go down like so and that's for my coffee and that's um an edition of a game of thrones that i will review soon in my next video that is where a bunch of um rosaries and that's another bunch of rosaries that sits next to my bed okay so this one is one that I forgot to I got left behind in the box and so let's take a closer look on this crucifix they don't make them like this anymore and when they do, it often costs an arm and a leg, so that's just life, isn't it? The most glorious item of human craftsmanship occurred in societies and civilizations where time and labor is available for cheap, which is the sad reality of how these things go. Um, when they are affordable, that is. And these skills are still around in the world, but they are so specialized and so highly valued that the same quality today costs a lot more, a lot more. So that's sterling. 
It's Mother Mary there and her medal. And then around is roses, which is often associated with Mother Mary. And that's what I like. Again, I prefer neutral medal in the middle or no medal at all. And I prefer this kind of knotting and the fact that it's all around the center medal as well as the bottom here is greatly comforting to me. And I like the real sort of nail going through the actual cross, actually fastening the corpus on rather than glued or, or soldiered on. And the intricacies of the design, it's everything. It's everything. So I'll get back to... Um, I'll get back to the batch which I unboxed yesterday with some notes. But now I am going to show you. So that's a bit of a long prologue, sorry. Um, this is my collection. So first, now I have uh, Courtney to thank. Um, and somebody else who introduced me to the Rosary of the Servites. I think that's how you pronounce it, the Rosary of the Seven Sorrows here, which... Um, no, this is not the Servites. This is not the Seven Sorrows. I, I beg your pardon, because the end of it is a crucifix rather than a medal. The one with a medal like this is the Seven Sorrows. You can see... At the end, you usually see that image of Mother Mary with seven swords in her heart. A very powerful image. Um, this one here, I think, is Station of the Cross. So you have... And again, I didn't know this existed growing up a Roman Catholic girl in a very liberal family. Um, this is made of aluminium, which I thought was interesting and makes it really light. And apparently in those days, aluminium is highly valued, which I thought was quite interesting. So the cross here, and this is each station of the cross. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So there's fourteen. Um, you know what? I actually do not know how to do the Station of the Cross. I don't know very much of it. I've never done it. Um, as I mentioned, I, my family was a very casual Catholic, so much so that I feel sometimes it's a cultural Catholic more than anything. Um, I'm second generation Catholic. My mother is first generation Roman Catholic. She was converted in boarding school. Um, convent boarding school and my father converted at least on paper to marry her I don't think he have ever um, actually experienced a transformation in belief but that's a whole other video right there so uh, yeah so there is these images here and this is made of ebony these days I would not have purchased anything made of ebony because I can't be sure as to whether they have been ethically harvested and you know purchasing antique endangered purchasing antique currently endangered um, material is a whole other topic that I will speak about some other time um, so this is that and the medals let's take a close look at that so it says, Jesus Nudatus Festibus. And then there's the image there. And then there's the events there. Jesus Affixus Cruci. 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 Jesus is crucified, I suppose. There it is. Not a very... I'm sorry for my dry skin there. I haven't moisturized these days. I have to moisturize my hands. In the past, it is naturally supple not these days and so here it says jesus 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 moriens in cruce in cruce i don't know latin so and then here it says 
Jesus sublatus cruce. Jesus sublatus e cruce, or e cruce. And he's been taken down from the cross. And then it's it goes on through the events that way. I didn't really quite start from the beginning, sorry. Focus, focus, okay. Here it says, Jesus positus in sepulcro. So Jesus is positioned in the tomb. So it starts here, obviously, because, you know, from the centerpiece here. I actually don't know how to do this. I think this is our father three times, or is it Mother, uh, Hail Mary? I think it's our father. Feel free to comment down below if you know. Jesus damnatus morte. So Jesus condemned to death, I'm thinking. Yeah. Jesus primo procumbens sur cruce or cruce. Jesus primo procumbens sub cruce again three. So that's ah oh, it's double. The um shouldn't that be number two? So this should be number two, but that's number three. And we have a doubling up here, number three. And then it's number four. Jesus ovia martisue. Martis. Jesus adjus. Jesus adjustus. Circeneo. I have no idea how to, how to. And then there's the image there. It's a very physical. It's a very. Um, sense oriented worship, I suppose, or contemplation. Jesus mundatus muliere. Jesus iterum procumben sub cruce or cruce. I think he fell several times while carrying the cross. Jesus consolans filias Jerusalem. And then Jesus ter dio procumben sub cruce. Cruce? Cruce. Ugh, very unpleasant, very unpleasant. Jesus nudatus, I think we've, we've gone here. Festibus, that's the 10th, and then it says 11. Jesus affixus cruce, yeah, we've, we've gone through that. Okay, so that's that. Focus, focus. Okay, so second is this one here. I can't remember what this is. Oh, this is the World War One. Um, this was received by somebody in in his parish. The seller, the seller received this directly from the French ambassador in the seventies, um, while he is in this parish in Chicago. Now, I wonder if he was the parish's priest or somebody i didn't ask i should have but this was given by the french ambassador in the 70s and it's the most amazing and it's very painful for me to put this back in and out because it's pretty tight and um he had protected the piece very well before he put this in and i couldn't place the protective wrap back and put it back in the thing i just have no it's the same with folding clothing and packing. I can unpack, I can never pack everything back in. I am just such a, I'm not very good with packing things in. Um, it's a beautiful piece. It is specifically created for soldiers in, until Vietnam, I think, the war in Vietnam. A variety of rosaries are issued specifically for soldiers. They are created in such a way um, with um, taking into consideration the environment of war, could you imagine, for them to carry. So the more modern one is anti. Uh, they're made in such a way so that they're not uh, easily broken and that they are compact. And like this one here is created so that it can doesn't, with minimal bulging, so you could see these metals here are created quite flat and very close to the chain itself. 
Um, not to mention that that saves space, I suppose, make, you know, making the piece as compact as possible. What is amazing about this, though, is that the fact that this is to be carried into war and there is this embellishment, it's probably a testimony of how, of the age, and after World War I, that age, that golden age, is um, ended forever. I don't think any of us seen such an age ever again, this very... You can see then I think that potentially I don't know any of you who understand um, military memorabilia a bit more and antiquities can tell me might be a number of battalion 149 and there's a grenade there which might be quite counterintuitive to see a grenade on a rosary um, which makes this so unique and um, there's the number one there I'm not quite sure what that indicates if somebody could tell me there's a whole uh, raft of information about wartime or rosaries specifically created for soldiers they are fascinating and there are people out there who collect only wartime rosaries sorry not wartime rosaries i beg your pardon rosaries for soldiers army issue rosaries issued created designed specifically for the army or for soldiers for the battlefront or the back front or whatever just a very special special indeed and so that's very flat in the back and and they still have time for this beauty it's just what fascinates me about that age is that even in a time of war even not only a time of war but the fact that this is carried to the battlefield i just can't get over it and there's this little opal there and this box here, it has this little mother of pearls uh, set in, I mean, an amethyst in here. And I mean, we don't see this even for daily casual, peaceful, leisurely use these days. It's just potentially it would just be too expensive, it would be too costly to create i'm feeling quite conflicted about these things sometimes i am more than aware that you know craftsmanship like this or for craftsmanship like this to be widespread it has to be re relatively affordable and for for things like this to be relatively affordable prices of labor um, and prices of craft people has to be sufficiently low and of course you know we live in a different time now um, and to value the craftspeople somehow we ended up creating an environment where of course the craft people should be valued but as a result it feels um, that beautiful things become quite out of reach um, from ordinary people and I would consider myself to be ordinary people and this is why I love antiques and vintage so much because they're relatively affordable for people like me um, and that is to say that these, some of these items are still available, created at a very high level today, but at a very high level cost. And some of these things aren't even available anymore because the skill's gone. Um, like a lot of the Puranakan jewelry that I will be talking about at some point, either here or on a different channel, those things become highly rare because um, people just can't afford them anymore and or the craft people become so um, for them it becomes cheaper to just not do the crafting um, like the batik craft people in Java okay I'm gonna you see what I mean by me having trouble getting this in the box so I'm gonna put this aside and I'll do this afterwards um, but a lot of uh, great craft people in the island of Java, those who craft batik, for example, it simply stopped the craft because they couldn't earn enough money to eat. So on the one hand, you have the disappearing craft because it's not earning enough. And on the other hand, you have the disappearing craft because it's simply too expensive. Um, you know, one, do you know what I mean? Like, it's almost as if... Oh, this is another yes yeah, so on the one hand you have the crap become so expensive that it disappeared 
all become so cheap that the craft people disappeared. So either way, it's um, something I've been pondering about all for a long time. This is another uh, Servite, so Seven Sorrows Rosary here. You can see her there. And this time it's not made of aluminium, it's made of something else. It feels a little bit heavier. And then you have the Seven um, Sorrowful Events depicted there. Just like the... Um, and again, I have Courtney, who gifted me one of um, my first, my very first Servite. I will show you later from her. And I wore it with me close to my flesh for several days after she gifted me that particular piece. And then I researched a bit more and I found a couple of extra pieces, or three so far. I have so far one, this one, and this one, um, and the one that she gifted me. And I found the uh, Station of the Cross variety, so the one I showed you, which is the one with the ebony and uh, aluminium there. So you can see the events there depicted. All of contemplating all these events. It's such an interesting way, such a sensual, I know that word sensual doesn't seem to... Uh, not focusing. It doesn't seem to be appropriately placed in this kind of topics, but I think the, the one thing I found about Roman Catholicism and the way they worship is very, very uh, oriented around the senses and emotions, which is the same exact reason why a lot of my Protestant friends feel that it isn't quote-unquote biblical because it focuses so much on your senses it focuses so much on your feelings and emotion and and not enough thinking I suppose they think and therefore not enough of what the Bible actually say and so that's a whole other topic but it reminds me very much of old world worship it reminds me very much of old world spirituality um, or what in the Western world would be called paganism and of course, a lot of my Protestant friends will say that, well, Catholics are effectively pagans anyway. They're not really Christian, and um, which I disagree, but, you know, I'll discuss that some other time. Okay, so the key is to put the chains first. Next is... This is going to be a leisurely collection video, so feel free to pick up a, a cup of coffee so this is the notes I believe yeah this is the French military um, sterling silver opal med metal and sapphire so it's not amethyst it's it's, um, it's sapphire that is there I actually thought that's um, amethyst it's not it's sapphire Sapphire, blue sapphire, nice. Oh yeah, it's blue, okay. Um, 59 oblong steel beads. The middle medal has a sacred heart of our Lord Jesus on the front and Our Lady Mother Mary on the back. So that's what it says. Um, beautiful crucifix ornate. The hanging length is 20 inches. Um, the box that holds it has a ring to wear on a chain if desired, so this itself is worn like this, I suppose, during in the battle front, I suppose you can't be so hanging, having dangling things around your neck. Uh, one of the, uh, something is missing, um, oh yeah, one of this is missing, one of these um, mother of pearl here, there is missing here. Um, and this was acquired from a French, acquired, or was it gifted, acquired from a French ambassador that was visiting my parish in Chicago in 1979, says the seller. Um, the other notes pertains to the other rosary, so let me take that out. Uh, I have yet to print out the notes from my first batch that I unboxed yesterday. So, okay, let me see. Uh, 
No, there weren't notes as I suspected. Okay, let's just carry on. Let's carry on with this one first, shall we? Put this aside. So, I believe this is made of agate and it's from the early 1900s, um, late 1800s, so potentially late Victorian. Whoops, excuse me. Um, I think this is blue agate. I will have to go by memory, guys, sorry. Um, to grab my notes will take too much and too much time, and I won't be able to do this today otherwise so might as well do this today and just rely on my memory of what these are you can see from the design here as well so there's this metal here that rosettes or whatever you call this as, as you can see I'm not a serious collector I'm, I'm collecting for love for fun but um, when I list this on my um, when I list this on my website I will definitely give you all the information at the moment, this is to stay with me, and what I will do potentially is list all of my collection on a website. Do stay stay tuned, and when I'm ready to release them, I will update the items with a price. Um, for the moment, I'm going to do video inventories like this one, um, and then when I have the time, I'll post them on a website with photos and a lot more information as um, part of resources that people can go to if they need to. So there is this, this oval ones is always fascinating to me. This is French. Um, and I do wonder if this is typically French in the period. And I, I love this lamiscape shape here because it reminds me of a logo of the Catholic University that my dad was with for during his master's when he was a master's student in Belgium and I have a lot of happy memories um, of our short years of our short life in Belgium it says Lourdes there so and of course there's Bernadette and Our Lady of Lourdes there Notre Dame de Lourdes it's very much part of my childhood this image and so all this reminds me so much of my childhood um, the Catholic University of Leuven uh, that who um, that was part of my father's life and to a certain extent the imageries from from that university is attached in my memory and the crucifix there is just so beautiful um, very ornate. I, I like the piercing through. I like it when the crucifix flipped around like that and it still looked beautiful from the back, that it doesn't look like the back of something. Uh, you know, some more than others. But So that's that one there. I'm more fascinated by this medal for some reason. Don't know why. So that's that one there. Um, I think I've shown you that particular one in a live stream and I did mention the medal as being one of the reason why I'm fascinated by this one it's, it's smaller than I would normally like I normally like huge I don't know why I normally like huge rosary so and a lot of them with my mala beads as well a lot of them are created for men because they're larger I suppose um, larger hands so this is made of what they call boxwood I've never heard of such a term but again look at the meadow it's quite lovely I'm quite taken by this medal it's brass if you could just focus yep there it is I can't saw Saint Alphonse image Immaculis I, I have no idea Rome and something something so there's Rome there's Saint Alphonse and there is the image of Our Lady of Perpetual something um, and that's very nicely done the relief there so if anyone can let me know what this medal is about Image Miraculis 
venery. So the miraculous veneration, right? Is that right? Rome. Something Saint Alphonse. Anyway. And you can see it's wood inlay, the cross or the crucifix. And it's getting a little bit, a little bit, um, you can see the shrinking a little bit there. I think that's ebony inlaid, I'm not sure. And then the back with this um, actual, I quite like, I really love the, how this is actually, that they're not glued. I really dislike glue in my things. I really, really do. <clears throat> And um, so you see this knot here, very good. And then this knot here and that knot here. And again, if you notice, there's no centerpiece. Um, the strands simply branch out like so. And I quite like that. I don't know why. Um, I think, I think um, as a Catholic, I have always been a little bit too, I was a little bit weary of having too much focus on Mary. And so that's probably why I'm uneasy with, I mean, this whole rosary is already dedicated to Mary, you know, so I always made sure that uh, Mary is, isn't the ultimate aim. She is our intercessor, I suppose. Do I still believe that? I don't know, but um, yeah. And last one for part one is this one here. This is a Art Nouveau piece, and it is made of actual jet beads. I used to collect jet beads, but they were black glasses made to look like jet. And I find them very lovely to wear, very heavy and nice. They're basically black glass beads, and this is my first ever actual jet beads and what amazed me is how light they are because jet is basically wood i think they are petrified wood and um so this is the cross and i'm not quite sure what's going on with this is just one the other one have come loose um which is a bit of a worry and this one's have came completely loose. There's something there before, I'm thinking. And you can see the design of the cross is very Art Nouveau and it's very French. This is also French. Um, in England, the period is known as Edwardian because of the reign of King Edward at the time. I can't remember. Is he Edward the First? I can't remember. And Art Nouveau is the new art movement in France. This is sorely this very, very typical of that period. And so this tying like this is good. It's not, you know, there's only just one there instead of the multiple wrapped around there, but it's better than just a simple round. So there. And then begin the jet beads. Again, I much prefer this kind of centerpiece or center medal or whatever you call this. Feel free to let me know if there is a term for it, um, but it doesn't have that knot around here. So, but you know, that's still a really lovely piece. And that's Mother Mary's insignia, I believe. I could be wrong, but uh, I think it's, yeah, it's very typical. I think it's Ave Maria, A, M, but I could be wrong. There's a couple of letters here. Um, again, very Art Nouveau there. And this whole thing is just as I like it. It's round and it's incredibly light. Um, yeah, I've never, never held jet beads before, and I adore this. This is one of my favorite here. Let's put that back. Where's the box? Um, and then we have this one here, which is 
a Georgian early Victorian. So I suppose before the reign of Queen Victoria was King George, Jane Austen, and that period, Napoleon, uh, 1700s is the period of King George. Um, this was estimated to be early 1800s, and so I suppose you could call it early Victorian, maybe not. If it's before Queen Victoria, then I guess it's late Georgian. Um, because it was estimated to be from the 1800s instead of the 1700s. This is quite heavy. And there's a way to open this, which I dare not try. I think you have to pull it or unscrew this, and I'm not going to. And this opens up like that, with the hinges is here. So the whole piece at the back here lift. And you see a lot of this on eBay where a lot of pieces, the crosses like this, but with very different pieces. And so like I've mentioned in my previous video, um, like jewelry consisting of different parts, rosaries consist of different parts. So often you have the beads, the chain, the medals and the crucifix from different periods being assembled at any given time in the past. And you see this kind of crucifix with the um, reliquy inside, like little, I think there's like two or three here. It's laid out one, two pieces of cloth or pieces of sometimes, I suppose, fragments of bones and that sort of thing. I can't remember what's in it, in this one. Attached to rosaries that feels or appear to to belong or created from different periods. So the crosses and the crucifixes look like they come from this kind of very similar like this. Very thick with this thing on, underneath, open up the same way. And the inside consists of different reliquies. And some of the beads look a lot older. Some of the beads look a lot newer than the one you see here. So this particular one have been estimated to be from a late Georgian period. And the wood again is what they call box wood. I think it's like a kind of wood from a tree that is often used as hedges, apparently, uh, if I'm not mistaken, if I don't, you know, if I remember that correctly. And you see again here, there is no metal in the middle, it's simply branch out. And I suppose the metal helps you remember where you're at. So by the time you reach this, you know, you're at the end, but I suppose a metal just help your fingers to see better, uh, as opposed to like this, right? I suppose, I don't know. Um, definitely when you're using your hand and closing your eyes, it's a lot easier to feel a big metal in the middle here rather than simply this three-way chaining here. So if you look at the beads, you recall from my other unboxing you see here, it's kind of, it's almost as if this one is trying to be this one, or maybe a modest imitation of this one, or maybe not at all. Maybe these are completely unrelated. Mm. But it's interesting to this beat so interesting I um, I don't think this is naturally like this I think this is actually created again if you have any idea of what we're looking at here put uh, feel free to comment down below but it's almost as if this is a more elaborate version of this but you know how this is just all around while here this is just like the circumference like you know, just around the bead one way, while here is completely all the way up and down, like right, throughout the beads there. Um, in the hand, it doesn't really matter. This one, it feels bigger, chunkier. This one's a lot more um, slimmer. Uh, this is this is more like that. So that's the alpha, the beads here. It's a lot more elaborate, I suppose, the bigger. Um, while here, interestingly, the alpha, the is smaller. So it's big, 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 and then small, big, 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 and then small. Um, but these two remind me of each other. The metal pieces, however, is quite different. One is very substantial, uh, while the other one is not so much. It's just kind of repose, repose, you know, when uh, stamped metal, basically, as you can see there. 
It's basically a, a thin piece of, of stamped metal. Well, this one here is a more constructed, it's hef heavier as well, it's quite solid. Um, and then of course there's this one here that we saw yesterday. Um, so that, there's a heavy, heavy brass as well. I absolutely adore this one. Like the back, I love how the back has, I don't know, I still can't see what that says. Um, I can't see what that says, I'm sorry. So if you want to, you know, feel free to um, pause that and zoom in. Um, yeah, I need to moisturize, I really do. So, and this one here has that style again there, but not as, I mean, this is really quite carved in quite deep focus focus okay focus oh good grief what is going on with this camera okay so that you see how deep it is here it's kind of only well not only but you can see here there's like a multi it sits on a flat there oh that's pretty sharp something just stabbed me i want to have to check Oh, the cat, I think, is asking to be let in. So you see that one there compared to this one here. It seems like the style of the day. Um, looks like it's um, compared to this one here, which is kind of... And that one there. Interesting. I've never seen anything like it before. Any of you who are perhaps a more avid collector than myself, uh, feel free to comment down below to give us a bit more information about what you see here that I may have completely missed. Um, this is some of my favorite ones. So I have another batch, I have another box of collection that I have to unearth from my trunk. And that trunk is sitting underneath another trunk and another thing and so I'll get to it. And oh, one more, one more. One more, I almost forget. So let's put this aside for the moment. Um, one more. This is, um, this is the crown in my current collection. This is a Victorian rosary made of brass and Baltic amber. This is the most I've spent on any, any of my rosaries. And um, as much as I would like to be buried with it, I think it's it's a selfish thing to do. So, um, and I don't see any of my niece or nephews wanting to inherit this. So I suppose if I'm going to be auctioning off my collection on my 60th birthday, I might. Um, hope for the best and maybe auction this off when I'm 65, I don't know. I do wonder if this has been replaced, I don't know. Um, and see this one here isn't wrapped uh, like, you know, like there's that horizontal wrapping around the loop-de-loop, -loop. it's not, and so that's a little bit more vulnerable. Um, I did wonder if any of these parts have been replaced, you don't know because the edges are quite sharp and usually old pieces um, are soft from touch. But having said that, as I said, it's very difficult to establish age and whether it's a genuine article or not from simply touch. The person who used to own this could potentially not touch the cross that often or the cross might be a newer piece compared to the thing itself and it's just no way of telling. Um, sometimes, just looking at the metal work here though, it seems pretty consistent, but it is possible that this has been replaced. We don't know because um, there's a little bit of whitening there, so these, this, these two could have been replaced from something else. 
And if this cross came from an entirely new piece, we really can't, we won't be able to tell either. So I believe this is brass, but I could be wrong. It could be copper, we don't know. I think this is brass. And um, the Baltic Amber, um, this is my first Baltic Amber. I have other kinds of amber, but it feels very much like plastic to begin with. So I freaked out a little bit because um, the price is very much not like plastic. What you do is that there's a variety of way to test them. But a lot of them are quite invasive, like sinking them in salt water, for example. I am not going to risk damaging the metal parts or poking it with hot uh, needle, for example, burning a little bit. That will leave a mark and so most people try to find hidden areas to do that and i just don't have the guts to do that the other way is to shine ultra ultra violet uv light onto it black light and it's supposed to i think it's supposed to give you green hues i think it's supposed to look green under uv light i could be wrong um, so yeah, I haven't subjected this to any tests yet. I trust the seller, but one of these days I'm going to try